Hi, 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 Paul. Uh, thank you for coming on uh, to talk about uh, Keir Starmer. I mean, he, he's someone um, that uh, you know we don't really know much about. I mean, he, he's putting he's put himself about a lot on the telly and stuff, but we don't really know who he is. Um, and you've 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 got some background information about him, but also the reason why I wanted to talk to you, Paul, is um, firstly. Uh, as someone who was in the military, what do you think of this kind of um, this kind of using uh, dressing up as a soldier? I mean, they all do it. I mean, Boris Johnson's done it. Liz Truss, done it. even Thatcher did it. Uh, yeah. How does it feel when you see that? Because obviously, being in the military, you see people doing that in their job, but it's also as casualties and stuff. It's like they're playing. Soldiers, aren't they? Literally, yeah. It's it's um, they, they are playing soldiers. I mean, it, it sometimes it can be annoying. Sometimes you can understand why they would be wearing uh, a helmet, or, or, or you know, depending where they are. Um, if they were riding a tank, you'd expect somebody to be wearing the appropriate attire. But walking a field, I'm not too sure about that. But what it's about is it, it's they, they're trying to protract this image of being a patriot, of being strong. Um, and um, especially now, while, while there's a, a war in Europe, you know, um, they're, they're trying to put this image across and it's quite disturbing. Um, and it's, you know, with the left, it's quite uh, counterproductive really. Uh, it's interesting that he should be doing this it's interesting that Starmer should sit at a desk with Union, flat, uh, Union Jacks mm -hmm. uh, and the image that he tries to put across. We all know why he's doing it. He's trying to attract what he sees as the, uh, the red wall that have left the Labour fold. But he's really got the wrong idea about how we see patriotism. Patriotism is not about flags. It's not about wearing a uniform. And I wore a uniform. Patriotism's about community. It's about being authentic with the people that you are representing. And it's not coming across that way. It's coming across false. Uh, it's coming across like Mr. Ben. One day I'm going to see him dressed, I don't mean Tony Ben, don't forgive, um, as Mr. Ben, the cartoon character. Uh, he's going into a shop and he's coming out one day looking like a workman. The next day he's looking like a soldier and constantly this gazing into the middle distance like he's going to bring in to, uh, to uh, some sort of new future. You know, he, he can he's see He's always pointing. He does a lot Yeah, of he's always pointing, yeah, usually yeah. to an ice cream van. Um, yeah, I mean... It, it, it's so false, um, and whoever's doing his PR, they, they they should sack him or change it. Did he? I mean, you've looked at his his background. He, when he says his dad worked on the factory floor, he he there's worked. There's no doubt about things. it. His dad was a toolmaker, but there's a few things about being a toolmaker. Now I'm in my fifties, and I remember growing up. My dad used to tell me, "If you can get an apprenticeship." And toolmaker was the top of that apprenticeship. You know, if you were a toolmaker, you were set because you would always have work. Fantastic trade to have. Um, you were never poor as a toolmaker, that's for sure. Yeah. Um, and his mother was a nurse. That's fantastic. I mean, to me, growing up a miner's son in a miner's village, that's middle class. Yeah. That's not working class. We want to look at these people. You know, they had the nicer houses. They had the the good jobs. You know that they that's that's something to look up to, something to aspire to as a working class person. You know, a nurse was always respected within our communities, um, and anybody that had a trade, such as a toolmaker, any trade, electrician, carpenter, whatever. We looked up to these people. We aspired to do that job. Like my dad said, you don't want to be working down this dirty hole. That's why I ended up joining the army. When it was 1984, I joined the army. There were no more jobs there. And that was the thing. You know, you joined the army in 84 in a, a pit village. Um, nice. But yeah, so he's a toolmaker. That's great. But he actually owned the company. Um, 
And that's good. That's great that he did that. But why shy away from that? Because to mm. me, that's a better story. It's a better story about a working class man that got an apprenticeship. It became a toolmaker and he owned the company. That's great. You know, it, you know, even to have people working for you. But he shies away from that. I mean, the, the facts behind it are that Starmer's father sat on, uh, I think it's Radio 4 and had a discussion and they talked about his proud, proudest moments about his son. Uh, how his son came to work for him for six months um, after a in between uh, actually it was after he uh, graduated um which is great that's great you know which father would not be proud of that but why Keir Starmer shies away from that is because mm. he wants to he wants us to believe he's you know no different um and he's trying mean, he, to do that I mean, he, he makes himself different but he's also said in the last uh week or two uh in an interview that he says uh I remember our utilities, our phone being cut off because we couldn't pay the bills. So I know what's going through people's minds. Um, Ask how long the line was cut out off for. He said for periods of time, months at a time, we got to a point where we couldn't pay for the utilities. I'm not claiming great poverty or anything, but I do know what it's like to sit around the table and think we can't make ends meet. Um, I mean, do you really think that he's... I mean, the thing that I find hard to, to, to swallow with that, we couldn't pay for the utilities. Not, um, yeah, the it phone is bill being swallow. cut off. The phone being cut off because we couldn't pay the bill. So I, I mean, it, that means so, if you can't pay the utilities, he's got no heating, has he? Mm -hmm. He's got no lights. You'd have no yeah. lights, would he? All heating. Yeah. Months mean, at a time. Like, let's just, you know, the phone. Yeah, the phone in the 70s. Yeah, I remember, you know, we'd moved into the 80s before we got a phone. And when we did get a phone, it was a shared line. Yeah, uh, you remember those things, you know. Working class people usually didn't have a phone. We actually shared somebody else's phone along the street if we ever had an emergency. But we used telephone boxes in them days, yeah, because, yeah. you know, that that's how it worked. Uh, I think, again, that Starmer trying to be part of a community that he left behind a long time ago, you know? Um, probably never was part of it. Probably never was because, I mean, th there's evidence to suggest that he was always petty bourgeois, you know, uh, the, the lower middle class. Uh, and you would be. Your dad's a tool maker, for God's sake. Your mum's a nurse. That's, they're two great jobs for the working class to aspire to when we were younger, when we were that age in their 70s, you know? Um, so, so yeah, none of it makes sense, but you can understand why he's trying to do it. He's trying to make out his working class, you know, but what's wrong with being middle class what, and fighting for the working class? No wrong with that. Tony Ben did it. Fantastic what, advocate what, for the working class. You just want to see some, some authentic person stood there turning around and saying, listen, we know that life is not as good as it could be. We will fight to make it better for everybody. And if you've got that guy in front of you, you're going to turn around and say, no, I'm going to vote for him because, you know, there's something about him that makes me feel he's been authentic, something about him that makes me feel he will do what he says. But because everything feels so contrived, so put together, so Photoshopped, you think, I can't trust well, this I mean, guy. But like Boris Johnson was... did. did do well in the election and he never ever made out he was working class um no and he won lots of people from the north who who didn't think oh this guy's from eton he's posh they kind so, of thought this guy's a good leader or something if, yeah, if the thing, thing is politics is one thing but human nature is another thing yeah and you know i mean completely opposite to my politics the the conservatives the tories completely opposite however you could see how boris johnson came across to the people as authentic you know um and working class people prefer people to be authentic and they can manage their politics you know um which you know it's a shame if he had some sort of vision that wouldn't be as bad uh, as, you know, the, the pretense that he puts up of, of being this 
working class hero made good, you know. People can tell when someone's not authentic. It's like a it's like a scent. It's like a sixth sense because you you have to have that, don't you, to survive. You have to be able to kind of it is our see survival instinct. We we understand when we're speaking to somebody straight away, we, we know. Um, and it doesn't matter how engaging that person is or, or, or what relationship we have with that person. We've just got a built in, you know, it's, it's, we have we have that sense. Uh, and it's very good that we do have that sense. Um, body language speaks volumes, you know, uh, and it just it just doesn't do it. It's, it's as wooden as the the images that people put out, you know. Uh, make him I mean some people say he's a nice guy he probably is uh, but he does lack in politics and he does lack in charisma um, and they say well he's doing really well in the polls you know what he's not doing well in the polls the Tories are doing badly yeah that's the difference he's a globalist he's a trilateral commission member uh, and, and I would you know, anybody that's listening to this, you really should look up Keir Starmer, the Trilateral Commission, uh, and read about, again, Noam Chomsky and what he has to say about the Trilateral Commission. Uh, they're very happy with globalisation. They're very happy with um, removing democracy from the people. As a Trilateral Commission member, the, his loyalties lie somewhere else and not necessarily with the ethos of the Labour Party and what the Labour Party was built on and to represent which are the working class and the workers.